The mind is a strange, unexplored place. In fact, there are so many undiscovered mysteries about our own brain matter that you could almost consider it to be the final frontier, a notion usually reserved for the deep, unexplored cosmic infinities of the universe. Here's a thought to existentially spook you out. The brain named itself. Yeah, trippy. Right? Because in many ways, we're just meat bags being piloted by a highly advanced alien species. But as the conduit of the unexplored world of psychedelia has expanded through the ancestral history of our species, several things have become strangely familiar. Namely, a series of entities known as the Clockwork Elves. Yeah, hold on to your hats because things are about to get a little bit trippy. Hello internet and once again welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, life's biggest questions. As per usual, I'll be your decent body floating voice Jack Finch as today we curiously ask the question, what if the clockwork elves were real? Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from the awesome 2009 experimental art film Enter the Void, directed by Gaspar Noe, which is one hell of a psychedelic road trip, as in, it's absolutely insane. But also, it poses an important hypothetical notion. What exactly is the endless expanse that lies beyond human consciousness? And more importantly, how do we get there? And even more importantly, is there ever any coming back? Let me introduce you to dimethyltryptamine, otherwise known as DMT, a naturally occurring chemical substance that occurs in many plants and animals, ourselves included, which is both a derivative and a structural analogue of tryptamine. When processed in the correct way, a method which has been cultivated by ancient civilizations in an incredibly uncanny method of innovation, DMT can be consumed as a psychedelic drug and has historically been used for ritualistic and cultural purposes, often pointing toward shamanistic practices and transgressive prayer. There is a very important reason then that DMT is also often referred to as the spirit molecule, a term coined by Professor Rick Strassman in his book of the same name. Throughout the 1990s, Rick Strassman and his colleagues at the University of New Mexico conducted a five-year-long experimental study on DMT with the intention of discovering the inner mechanics of the subjective psychedelic experiences that it induces. One thing became quickly apparent though, after Strassman repeatedly experimented on numerous volunteers, they all reported a frighteningly similar encounter. And by all, I'm not talking one or two people or even ten. I'm talking all of the five dozen human volunteers reported meeting the exact same clockwork elf-like creatures in a completely isolated, controlled environment. It was no doubt that DMT had been culturally used to produce hallucinogenic experiences, inducing a state or feeling that the user could communicate with other seemingly intelligent life forms. They all seem to have the same familiar appearance as well though, corporeal creatures or entities that seem to welcome the user into their hyperdimensional space with a warm, excited embrace, willing the user not to panic and to happily accept this bizarre new psychedelic universe as a a pioneer psychonautic explorer. In actual fact though, what these people were experiencing had already been penned 30 years prior by renowned philosopher and ethnobotanist Terence McKenna. He coined the term machine elves in several of his published texts, or more specifically, self-transforming machine elves, which one could frequently make contact with in the psychedelic universe. In McKenna's own words, he claimed that right here and now, one quanta away, there is raging a universe of active intelligence that is transhuman, hyperdimensional, and extremely alien, which is ultimately an earth-shatteringly colossal claim, but please hold on to your hats because things are about to get a little bit more uh, crazy, I guess. Terence McKenna claimed that the entities encountered in the tryptamine realm was actually an interior manifestation of what he called the Logos, the ultimate source of all knowledge. These machine clockwork elves, which appeared in various intangible, ever-changing forms, acted as ambassadors of the Logos, which he described as the Oversoul, or the Gaian Mind. Their intention was to inform us about a realm of consciousness that existed outside of our comprehension, that remained separate separate from our own physical realm that could only be accessed through psychonautical means and the harnessing of the naturally occurring DMT. But you might be thinking, 
Hold up a minute, Jack. What the hell are you talking about? Machine elves, oversouls, hyperdimensional brain travel. This is a load of hogwash, mate. Do you really expect us to get on board with this? DMT is just some crazy plant that makes you trip balls. Forget about the clockwork elves, they're just a cultural phenomenon. Everyone knows that. And yes, of course, that may be true. In my opening statements, I pointed to the fact that we know next to nothing about the human mind or the nature of consciousness. The best that we've managed to come up with is, I think, therefore, I am. Cogito ergo sum. But hold on a minute, because in actual fact, the man that penned that particular philosophical proposition, René Descartes, also had a thing or two to say about dimethyltryptamine. What? You may ask, you mean René Descartes as in the 17th century French philosopher, scientist and mathematician? What has he got to do with clockwork elves and psychedelic space travel? Well, you see, Descartes had a thing for this little biological function known as the pineal gland, a small node that occurs in the brains of animals with backbones, as in you and I, as well as rats, rabbits and all the rest, which Descartes described as being the principal seat of the soul, the connector between the spiritual and the physical realm. And you know what the pineal gland just so happens to naturally produce? DMT of course, dimethyltryptamine. If that's the case, then maybe these clockwork self-replicating machine owls are a little bit more real than we could possibly ever imagine. Maybe we shouldn't be asking whether these corporeal interdimensional entities are real or not. Maybe we should be asking the question, what the hell do they want? Ah, uh, jeez, I think I need to go take a little bit of a lie down. All right, yeah, give me a minute. While we process this cacophony of mind, body, and soul, why don't you let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'm not really sure what to expect for this one. Before we depart, let's take a quick comforting look at some of your most creative comments from over the past few days. DCO Nightingale says, Jack Finch sounds like a superhero name. Ah, cheers, buddy. That's cheered me up for my brief existential crisis. What would my superhero handle be, though? Disembodied man? Floating man? <laughs> yeah. That one kind of sucks. Cheers, though. Yeah, I still need to take that line out. Well, unfortunately, folks, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Cheers for sticking around all the way until the end. If you're a fan of this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And we'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your disembodied floating voice, Jack Finch. You've been watching Life's Biggest Questions. And until next time, you take it easy. <laughs>